you're not going to look at uh, basic properties of light. We'll add some other properties on a little bit uh, in a different video. Uh, and why we care about light or electromagnetic radiation is that it is interacting, it interacts strongly with electrons. So we can use this to probe the position behavior of electrons and atoms. And light is really electromagnetic uh, radiation. It uh, has an uh, electric component, so we'll call that the red one. Um, the blue one is the magnetic component. It's a self-propagating uh, system between the electric and magnetic components. We see a small spectrum of it, the uh, visible spectrum, the rainbow, roidy biv colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So beyond this spectrum, it continues. So beyond the violet and it goes up to ultraviolet, then x-rays and then gamma rays. And this is the high energy end. Which is why these spectrums, ultraviolet, uh, x-rays, gamma rays, tend to cause us harm because when they're absorbed by the body, they have a lot of energy in there. Although we need ultraviolet to produce vitamin D in our skin. Beyond the red end of light, we have infrared, uh, which we can feel with our skin. Uh, and then uh, beyond that is microwaves and radio waves and ultra low frequency waves. Uh, and these are these spectrums that we use for communication down here. We've been using a radio with the longest, and we went into microwaves, and now we're going into infrared with our uh, 5G technology. So in a vacuum, speed of light is constant at uh, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, speed of light will change in different media, uh, in water and glass and air. It uh, gets slowed down a bit by the media, uh, but um, we're just going to deal with the speed of light in a vacuum for our process. And these um, ranges of light have uh, two properties uh, that are fixed. I guess a total of three properties. So wavelength, um, frequency, and energy. So wavelength would be the distance between two peaks on a wave or two identical points on a wave. Uh, so wavelength will be big down here. And small down here. The other component, so we use uh, the Greek letter lambda to identify our wavelength. And uh, the other component is frequency. We use the Greek letter nu to identify uh, frequency. And if we just watch the light go past, we stand still, watch it go past, and count all the crests, that will be the frequency. The count all the crests that pass in one second, that will be our frequency. Um, so, Frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So our frequency is high down here and low over here. So frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. And the relationship is given by this. Lambda nu uh, is equal to a constant. So if we are increasing our wavelength, our frequency is going to decrease and vice versa. If we increase our frequency, our wavelength will decrease. So the product is always a constant, the speed of light. Turns out that energy tracks with our frequency. So energy equals H nu. Uh, H is Planck's constant. That's the smallest unit of energy uh, in this world. Energy is quantized quantity. So it has to be in multiples of Planck's constant. It's a very small value, so we don't see that uh, digitalness to our energy. So 6.626 times 10 to the minus 
34 joule seconds. So energy is H nu equals H nu. And if we rearrange this, it's all for nu, which would be C over lambda. If we substitute it in here, then we also get HC over lambda is energy. So <clears throat> if we're increasing our frequency, we increase our energy and we decrease our lambda. So if we decrease our frequency, we decrease our energy and increase our lambda. So we want to be able to convert between our wavelength and frequency. So here's a problem to do that. So we're given that we have a frequency of 8.55 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. And uh, 10 to the 14 frequency is typical for um, near light frequencies. Um, <clears throat> this is on the edge of ultraviolet itself. So to solve for our wavelength, which is what we were asking for, we solve this equation, get our wavelength to C over nu. We put in our values. Uh, and uh, we always want to use SI units for these. Um, so our C that we give you is in SI units of meters per second. Frequency is inverse seconds. So we divide them and we get uh, 3.51 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, our SI unit for distance. We often use nanometers for light near the visible spectrum. So uh, 1 meter is 10 to the 9 nanometers. We multiply by the ratio of nanometers over meters, and we get 351 nanometers. So light near the visible spectrum, we get a, a small non exponential exponential number for our nanometers. So going in a different direction, we got our wavelength given to us in nanometers, 362 nanometers, and we want to uh, convert it into energy. Well, we can use HC over lambda, but we want our SI units, so we want to convert our nanometers into meters. So we multiply it by one meter over 10 to the positive nine nanometers, we end up with 3.62 times 10 to minus 7 meters for our wavelength. We put it into our expression, hc over lambda, h is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second, divided by our uh, lambda in meters, 3.62 times 10 to the minus 7. And we get um, <coughs> 5.49 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And this is per photon. And again, this is typical for light near the visible spectrum of 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. Uh, another way that we like to see these numbers, so if we don't specify units, this would be a valid answer here. Uh, but we often like to see our answer in terms of kilojoules per mole. Again, a uh, you know, small non-exponential number. So we take our answer in joules, divide it by, uh, multiply by one kilojoule over a thousand joules, and then multiply by Avogadro's number. Um, so Avogadro's number has our per mole units, so we end up with our kilojoules per mole, and it turns out to be 331 kilojoules per mole.